about. Uh, some of the overview for the presentation, we're, we want to talk about the high impact activities uh, as a mechanism of relationship building, even though we were in a virtual environment, uh, connecting uh, the mentored research uh, to the undergraduate, and then forming the cultural awareness and cohort creation, which was very important to us because we're a, a, a small uh, 200 uh, student program in the College of Science and Technology. And then uh, we wanted to, how do we deal with mentored research in a COVID environment, which was a challenge for everybody and still remains somewhat of a challenge, even though we're, we're at about 90% uh, face to face. And then we want to, of course, for the grant assess outcomes. So just very quickly, a little bit about our university. Um, on the upper left, you'll see our uh, the old main building. The lower is the uh, uh, College of Business. And uh, the one to the right, lower right, is our brand new science and technology building. And it opened, um, I want to say, the uh, fall, of, uh, fall of 2019. And then, of course, COVID came. And so we had brand new labs, could not use them actually. Uh, we're a four year institution, Hispanic serving, minority serving. Uh, so we, we have the clientele that the United States needs in the STEM arena in particular. Uh, so it's very incumbent on us to make sure that the STEM majors are, are performing well and high and on, in an on time manner. And then we want to get them jobs or go to graduate school. So we have about 40 majors, eight masters, about 14,400. That's a little lower uh, in this semester, but I'm not here to talk about that right now. And then we have about over 2,000 graduates each year. So uh, of the 1,700 majors in the College of Science and Technology, uh, the Scholars Academy makes up approximately 25% of that. And we do have a mission uh, to increase the number of minority uh, students graduating with degrees in sciences at 100%. We're not quite there yet. Uh, and then the vision, of course, is to have them matriculate into uh, graduate programs and or the workforce, uh, either after the graduate program or before the graduate program. That's their choice, of course. And just a little bit about the demographics. I won't go into great detail. Uh, we, we are high in Hispanic. Uh, you'll see that uh, we look we look somewhat like the actual uh, larger university, except in Asian population. We're heavy on the Asian and STEM, which you would find across the United States. Quite quite honestly, it's not an anomaly with us. And then also, and sadly, because we're working very hard to recruit uh, African American students, uh, we're much lower in the sciences. Uh, than we are in the larger university. But again, we are working hard to recruit those students. So uh, why mentored research? Just some background information. Uh, KU and AACU talk about impact, uh, high impact practices <coughs> that help to support strong connections to student retention and to student engagement. And that's a foremost reason, especially in the College of Science and Technology. And then many uh, four-year universities and, and colleges uh, have as a routine use undergraduate research as a student support mechanism, meaning that they get connected to the PhD in the lab, they uh, form uh, partnerships, they understand what happens at the graduate level or the doctoral level. And so it's a, it's a very lengthy uh, program of study, not only for the, the research part of it, but, but it, it's a jumpstart into uh, the graduate programs. And then there are many studies that uh, suggest that undergraduates that are involved in uh, research uh, experiences uh, in a lab under a PI or a PhD uh, professor or in the classroom setting, because we're seeing more C-U-R-E, uh, classroom undergraduate research experiences, uh, that, that they find that these experiences enhance the entire undergraduate experience. So if you're wanting to get them connected, and that's the reason for the summer bridge, get them involved in research quickly, even though their knowledge base may not be at a level where they understand everything that's going on, but they're part of a team that's working on a research uh, project. And then increasing the substantive interest in a later career, which I've already talked about, but Mock 1993 uh, shares that, that research. 
And then finally, uh, gains in self-confidence, pathways to science, careers, uh, especially amongst first generation. That's what we are. We have almost 76% first generation student. Uh, minorities and females in particular uh, were found by Lapato and several publications on that and Hathaway. So there is research to support that mentored research is uh, a support system of its own for STEM majors. Uh, would it work for other students? Absolutely. Those professors you know, outside of the uh, uh, STEM area would have to be involved in research. So this particular Department of Education Minority uh, Science and Engineering Improvement Program uh, began in 2019. And there were several elements to it. The one we're going to talk about is career and research skill development. And I'm happy to send you the PowerPoint or send you more information if you want that uh, information. So uh, we, uh, the Enhancing STEM program involved a five week summer research program. Uh, and then uh, we, we do this not only for the Scholarship Academy, but for others also. Uh, we targeted uh, enroll, the bridge really is an enrollment uh, enhancement so that they already are enrolled. They've accepted the invitation to come to University of Houston downtown. But what we find is from, from May or even December the, the year before to fall of the following year, we may lose them, right? Because they're bright, they're getting many invitations. So we try to put together a summer uh, experience so that they're involved with our faculty during that period. The first uh, experience being the research program, summer research program. Uh, and then we know this, that the we're 60% transfer and the transfer students, uh, they're not a given that they're going to finish, even though they may have two to three years left. So we bring them in also. And then we also bring our own undergraduates that are at the sophomore, fresh, uh, sophomore junior, and senior level as well. Because we know also beyond helping with um, persistence, we know that uh, summer research will give them a leg up on their application to graduate programs. And so that's very important for the students that are already in the, in the uh, program, our program. So this particular um, uh, grant program really tar targets females as well, and especially undergraduate females. So, uh, and then career development. So some of these uh, examples up here are uh, what we're measuring in terms of metrics, but I'll talk about that in just a minute. So uh, how did this uh, in year one, well, this says year two, how did it impact minority STEM enrollment, which is one of our, our major measurements? Uh, you can see that we increased our sales by 56%, uh, minority graduation rates, 56%. This is, uh, this is in particular to STEM. The university as a whole has about 23% graduation rate. So you can see that this, this one arena, College of Science and Technology is really, outperforming others. And then uh, minority STEM persistence, we, we know that it's at 94%. And uh, now things that affected this particular grant and this particular year, well, in February, 2021, we, of course, 2022, 2020, we had COVID pandemic. We all went into uh, quarantine and we went remote. Everything was remote. And then uh, we remained that way, but following that, uh, first semester, fall 2020, we actually had uh, the Texas uh, freeze. And so we were out for almost two weeks. That was a normal institutional outage. Students were affected for almost the entire semester. I had students, I was remote. I had students that didn't have water. They couldn't find a plumber. Uh, they were evicted. I cannot tell you how many <laughs> incidents of, I need, I need help. I need money. The only way I could help was to give another scholarship. And so that they, that would translate into money for them. And so that's what we ended up doing. Uh, lots of job losses because of that. And then the undergraduates who withdrew, withdrew because they had to take the jobs of the family members who were in the hospital or had died, et cetera. So it, it's a, a multiple plasmic 
event or events that happened to us, not only us, I will say that, but we're just telling you our story. And so there were four co-PIs on this project, two could not come today, one is joining us virtually, uh, Dr. Mian Jang, and his research is in uh, molecular nano uh, wires chemistry in particular, he'll talk more about that, he's the expert on that. And then uh, Dr. Fang, Dr. Wayne Fang, who's involved in power systems, solar, uh, engineering technology aspects, and then she'll share with you what she did. But we did have a microbiologist and we did have a, a computer scientist who was involved in not only uh, robotics, but also uh, uh, backend databases for web-based uh, web uh, websites. And then, well, we had so much interest on the part of the students, even though it was virtual. They didn't know what they were getting into, but virtual. They, we had to enlist the help of other professors who generally work with us on mentored research. And so just to mention some of them, Dr. Jeddick, Dr. Shoemaker, Dr. Shu, Dr. Zhang, well, she actually substituted for a professor who left our university. Uh, but at the time she was a substitute. Uh, Dr. Trufan, Dr. Kang, Dr. Kavi, Dr. Saha, Dr. Jost, Dr. Theravathu, Dr. Tobin and Dr. DeClose. So you can see we have a spectrum across natural sciences, computer uh, science and engineering technology, and then mathematics and data science. And so just to give you a, a, a look at some of the participants in the, in the program, uh, in year one, we only had 10. That was the very first virtual. And then uh, the remaining were 12 sophomores and 16 juniors, total of 38 for virtual. That, and when you think about how many professors, that's still a lot of students. Uh, Gender-wise, we had 22 females, 16 males. And ethnicity-wise, we had uh, a white, 10 African-American, 16 Hispanic, and 11 Asian, just to give you a roundabout. Now, for year two in our program, we had more freshmen, uh, first time in college, 13. We had current undergraduates, 50. So we had a total of 63. I mean, they just want this. We're still virtual. We're still virtual, but they want, they've heard from others. And well, the other thing is, okay, I'll be quite honest with you. They do get a stipend from the grant. And so they, they may come for the stipend, but they learn and figure out how to do research in the interim. But the stipend is very helpful to them. So gender-wise, we had 34 females, 29 males. 62 females uh, uh, percentage-wise in minorities, and then 35 minority males. So uh, the question we asked is, how, how do we do this during COVID? And we had an orientation for all of the professors that were part of this program in, in uh, May of 2020. And that's the question I posed to them. And they all began to think about, I'm not gonna tell them how we do it. I, 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 I have some ideas, but this is their baby they're going to come up with their ideas and you'll hear from them in, in just a, a little bit. But to give you an idea, some uh, began with the theoretical, you know, read the published literature, get into depth about this, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, as often in mentored research at the lower uh, grade levels, freshman, sophomore, uh, they don't get to do that. You know, they're, they're in there watching the undergraduates that are upper level, and they may be washing the, uh, the glassware or whatever. And so this was a real unique take on how do we start. And then uh, some actually, some professors just insisted that they go eight weeks, and so I had to dig up more money, and we did. And those students wanted to do it, and so there it is. I mean, they were inculcated in this process, which the professors, I'm about to get to them so that you can hear the real, real life stuff. So some of the ways that we, uh, some of the technology that we in, infused into this particular summer uh, program, we used YouTube, uh, we looked at other videos, we used web, uh, websites such as Blast for the genomics, and then uh, they kitchen chemistry, which you'll hear more about in just a moment. And then they established safety protocols. If it was a microbiology lab, they, the professor wanted them to be uh, in, entrenched. And what do we need to worry about if we're going to do this once we get to the lab? And then we, uh, the professors, we had an orientation and a midterm meeting uh, that everybody attended. And then the professors and their 
uh, mentees uh, performed a weekly Zoom meeting so they could have contact. They determined the work schedule based on what the, they wanted and what the student could do. Okay, let's see. Uh, we, we have the recordings for future if we need. We do have, they, they did have to do a Zoom midterm summer presentation, which was recorded. That was in preparation of a Department of Education summer conference that they were going to apply to and everybody applied. And then, uh, you know, we wanted to have uh, relate to the goals, the hours needed and the expectations and those would come. So I dictated uh, to some degree, the deliverables, the time schedule was really the, the co-PIs or the PhDs. <laughs> Okay, now the good stuff. All right, so Dr. Mian Jane will go first, and then Dr. Wayne Fang will proceed. Don't rush, professors. I wanted to give you more room. Okay. Oh, hi, uh, this is Mian Jiang. Um, as uh, Dr. Parker just mentioned, and then we just had a, um, a brand new science and technology building that just uh, finished five years ago, one and a half years ago. Then we got this uh, pandemic, and then so. We, we actually have not been fully explored that, uh, that building yet. However, um, I'm a chemistry professor. Um, as you know, the chemistry is really uh, uh, experiment-oriented science. So if without any hands-on experience or bench work, and then students basically uh, probably can still go through the semester, but uh, when they face the future employers or graduate school, then they really have a big lack for hands-on experience. So that's why we really cannot uh, compromise or uh, degrees of uh, uh, vigor of the academic uh, learning goals uh, for this specific uh, scientific discipline. So that's why we uh, we strove very hard to uh, achieve that goal. Unfortunately, with the help of uh, the Department of Education and the MSS EIP program with Dr. Uh, Parker's leadership for the grant is a great, great grant. So really helps student a lot, as uh, she already mentioned. And then um, some students probably initially uh, came with uh, money, even small money can help, especially with the uh, Texas grades and uh, this going on pandemic, but eventually they develop their interest. So I'm going to talk about it in very specific, hopefully that will not be so much technical, uh, but you can stop me any time for any technical question or logistic questions, okay? Um, so uh, uh, in this past two years, uh, still going on now, um, I trying to, um, divide my uh, basic uh, central facility oriented chemistry into as a home or field testing base. Um, I they were divided into like four sub disciplines. So the first one, as you can see, is a, is a microbial fuel cell uh, based on battery preparation. Uh, of course, now the new energy or energy alternative now has uh, become a focus, especially on the visa administration now, right? Um, so the fuel cell has been an old subject. But now we combine those with like a biology or technologies or uh, in this special case of microbial um, related to fuel cell. So then there will be a crossing the disciplinary, okay? Um, we understand our student bodies level, okay? they are all uh, the UH downtown is primarily uh, undergraduate uh, institutions. Um, so we need to have our manual to fit into that level. Uh, but in the meantime, a lot of compromise is uh, originality or novelty because when students are doing even mental research, I mean, I still focus, they must still be reminded of research, the life, the, the life of research is, a, is a new. Okay? You need to have something to be new, uh, either improved uh, or uh, brand new. You, uh, you can have a, as a new as a, as an advance, like a Robert Prize winning work or as a new as like some small improvement, but right? you need to have something improvement or new. So that's why, we need to combine with some new development in the field, like a microbial fuel cell is, is such a, has such an advantage for that. Um, as you can see on the, the very left, and then uh, this, uh, uh, this is this a scheme for the general principle, how, uh, uh, how a, a microbial um, a fuel is, uh, uh, is functioning or constructed. So uh, this is quite interesting because um, this actually, this scheme, this principle so really offers opportunities to, to use like a field work or like a Dr. Parker would imagine it's a kitchen chemistry, okay? Uh, so how can we do some microbiome that samples or material related to that one? I mean, the bacteria or anything. And then the student just 
just went to the field to go to the bio bank or the mega bank to get some of smudge or soil sample over there. They already contain some bacteria, it's already proved. So that means we have a source of that. We do not need to go to the now much restricted central facility to get a bacteria. Then you need to go through all of those, a lot of the stringent safety protocol for, for BSL 2 or 3. So that's the source. We saw we saw battery issue. And then for other part for how to make a battery, you know, battery you basically is add on a cattle, you know, into the zinc or copper wire or or, or, or ribbon. Uh, that's just basically like a battery, those things. Okay, so we use those conventional material. And then as you can see, a uh, student get some like a some uh, air pump, okay, from the home home depot, uh, then get this uh, uh, soft uh, uh, table salt solution. Um, uh, soak rope uh, serving as a as a as a as the solid bridge. Okay, so actually serving as a membrane, as you can see from the from the skin. So uh, then the rest would be the wires, alligators, or multimeters, and then we could do small supplies from our Scarlet Academy. By the way, Dr. Mark Parker did mention before, and the, and the she is the Scarlet Academy uh, director. Scarlet Academy in the in our university is equivalent to a uh, uh, to a uh, like a. Uh, Honor College, okay. Some other university usually is honor college, but in our university, especially in, in Stern field, is a scholars academy. So basically the student that in that academy is really a selective group, but we are open to all our students. So now in this MSI EIP program, they're open to all of our university Dana students. So we're gonna do supply support on the grant, and then we and uh, they can see this is constructed by student, and this is a uh, uh the this is a different setup on the different uh, different uh, uh, combinations or conditions. Like uh, some of them are based on the serious circuit, some of them are based on the parallel basis. Okay. Um, uh, this is probably just like so much data here, but uh, this is a PowerPoint will be available for everybody online. So if you have more questions, you can always ask me. Uh, I, I will be happy to answer those at the confusion point. So, uh, so the, you guys, the student actually found a piece of blue line and a red line. These represent uh, uh, the electronic circuit constructed on the series or, uh, uh, or parallel setup uh, on the different chemical situations. Okay, so for the uh, the operating principle for the microbiofuel cell is, uh, uh, as you can see from the uh, from the uh, the scheme. Uh, so for the anode side, it has a uh, um, completely bacterial uh, soak uh, the certain sludge that will oxidize oxidize some uh, organic residues. Uh, you know, by bio sludge, you have a lot of organic residues. So that will eventually generate electrons. The electrons will go through the external circuit, go to the cathode side. Cathode side, we have is a uh, this uh, uh, homemade uh, the air pump that's completely pumping the air, which is contains oxygen, and then this will form the operating principles for the cathode. So this is the principle for that, and still on this goes in. Um, so it's quite interesting because student, they generate this electricity and they find that the voltage is measured by the multimeters, they all they discuss basically for that, okay? So I have another examples. Um, this will be another kind of project, again, related to battery, but this battery is based on like a, just basic soil, like a garden soil, a backyard soil. And then, of course, this battery uh, basically is based on the different metals, uh, like a metal, like a copper or a zinc. And then the soil basically serves as, 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 as electrolytes. Okay. However, uh, students still, because they are going to see the battery, the, the voltage generated from their own home made battery. So, in that battery, you can see this, they use a refrigerator as an ice cube and, and covered with the soil, just basically zero cost, right? And then that's one successful example for that group. And then this is the other one, just use the, um, the CD disc. Okay, the CD disc just uh, wrapped with a couple of wire and then they form a solar, uh, solar cell battery. Okay, and then they test this one on completely just electrical uh, sunlight and then this is completely dark as a control. And then they found the readings interesting. Uh, then we have a systematic characterization for this uh, uh, man, uh, homemade earth based one or solar based one. And the chemical principles they understand the whole thing is based on the conducting or light absorbing properties of a couple based material. Uh, so that actually helped me uh, for when I teach general chemistry. They any student who had general chemistry, like even high school, advanced high school, they can do this job. 
the student approaching me can just like the second week from the university of Dhaka. Okay, so you don't need to be a um, maybe senior or junior to do that. So that will just offer a lot of fun. They start from fun. They start with like a stipend. Then they eventually develop some good idea to be good uh, chemist. Uh, the third project is related to this MSIC EIP um, sponsor program. It's a uh, they use this uh, um, whole extracted uh, the pH dye that is originally uh, came from the red cabbage. The red cabbage contains like the uh, one active material that is a uh, uh, anthocyanin, and that will be a pH sensitive uh, dye. They when they encounter the, the acidic <laughs> material like a, like a, like a, a acidic acid or, 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 the, or the vinegars, and then they tend to the red color to the see uh, the pink color, and then when they uh, see the, the basic material like a baking soda, they tend to dark baking the black or, or blue. So they go to the, they, they, they extract this one just by using regular boiling and they use a home. This is the home place of the beaker for the beers. Hopefully it's not drinking age. And then they use this uh, uh, just regular the syringe as a fuel rack. Okay, so they then they build a few a home based titration assembly. So they go beyond the pH testing for different uh, uh, acid or basic material in you know, the household kitchen items, but also they use this one for quantitation medicine. I mean, so when I teach uh, quantitative chemical analysis, that's a 3,000 level class, that's an up level division class, and then we use titration to do quantitation medicine, quantitation, and then they just go beyond by using this one, and as you can see, this is the titration curve, although it's not doesn't look like it's a, it's like a Google book, Google book would be much smooth S shape, but this one is like a more rough, but still show the trend. And then as a control ABC can be, you can see the, the visualization the color will be over there. And this is, we can use this one to quantify how much baking soda is contained in the household baking soda. Household baking soda is not 100%. They are used for clean the toilet. I mean, clean any rusty places, but not 100%. And the way you use this kind of titration assembly made at home uh, assembly, they can do that. They, they, do, they develop the whole process, use the whole my face, the, the balance or gradual cylinder or titrating assembly. It's quite a lot of fun. They can just really relate to their life. This is the last one. Um, uh, this is, uh, uh, this, they just, again, they use this dye uh, to studying the uh, electrolysis of water, okay? And electrolysis of water is, is, is being uh, just a cookbook uh, example for, High school and uh, even uh, the first year of uh, general chemistry, and then because that uh, work, uh, that uh, electrolysis of water offers such a great example uh, for the basic electrochemistry and the economic use of water electrolysis, especially in this uh, global crisis of water, especially fresh water. And um, so, as you can see, the principles shows the electrochemistry reaction of the electrolysis, but for student. They just use this dye because this dye, uh, as we saw, this is pH dye, can uh, red color when it's uh, incoming acidic, and they tend to like a green color, tend to basic. And then, as you can see, the electrolysis of water as a generated hydroxide and, uh, and hydrogen plus, they can be differentiated by that. And then, uh, then go beyond. This is another example. This is another example. They use this electrolysis to uh, electrolyze our salt water. So this time they do not generate hydrogen uh, gas, oxygen gas, and they do generate hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. So that means these are principles from the home based chemistry can go beyond, can go beyond these basics. As you can see, this is a good example. This is a, the hydrogen uh, during this home based electrolysis of water. You can see that the hydrogen gas uh, generated the double body, the oxygen gas. So that means what? That is exactly that's the example. So they got a metrically ratio decided the one to two more ratios in the whole day. So they from the whole process they're not only learning just how to go bench work, kitchen chemistry, I and mean, relevance to the whole world, but also some of basic calculations for you know, chemistry, for psychometry, these combine all of the knowledge uh, from general chemistry, the first 1,000 class, all the way to 3,000 level class. It's a good summary. And this is all done by without any central facilities. So uh, uh, I want to wrap up. I already spent too much time on this. <laughs> now, as you can see, there's a, what's the game? What's, I mean, when students have invest, yeah, they, some of students approaching us because of this great stipend, because of uh, 
uh, the research requirement for the managers uh, because of they just are uh, interested for that reasons, but also they eventually develop some interest from this. And uh, we we have some goal, hopefully they will be converting the candidates, <laughs> right? But uh, but uh, but I do not mind if they just use me as a static store. Eventually, a lot of people, the student did it that way, they move, continue, and we we uh, the University of Houston downtown, we have Department of Electrical Science. That means we in that one department, we can have more than like, chemistry, biology, I mean, microbiology, physics, I mean, five different disciplines. So students actually do advantage when they, if they go research through all of the, this, this whole, uh, uh, this whole many years for that, for that uh, college learning. So that's that advantage. And then, uh, this is a summary. So chemistry is experimental oriented science and hands-on is a must, it's a must. We cannot use a pandemic online just to deter our things, okay? They need to get their hands wet, okay? When they try to choose this profession. And then daily life is the whole of the chemistry, okay? So many meaningful chemistry experiments can be done with a conventional material from kitchen chemistry, even on the COVID. And the students are, Self is uh, self fulfilled when they develop some their own idea, and then eventually get this idea as materialized. They feel excited, okay? They feel excited, so that's why they further develop motivation with this. Uh, finally, uh, uh, these are students who under this program work with me as you can see the SNSP. Um, uh, these are the before just. This is on 2005, we just one, we had several cases, in them. But, but eventually they were successful the whole scene and even more probably for this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, following my colleagues, Dr. Parker and Dr. Jiang, I'm going to share with you my involvement with this DOEP program, uh, working with students on undergraduate research. A little bit about myself, uh, my background, um, my education background was electrical engineering, but uh, um, get into uh, professionally, uh, my, most of my research work, um, teaching activities, research activities, are related to measurement automation industrial control systems. Uh, so um, the uh, involvement with this DOED program, I, I think Dr. Parker has given a very, very uh, top level of role, uh, overview, the purpose, the goal, uh, the methodology. Uh, what I intend to share with you all is in uh, my part, how I work with research students on topics related with uh, measurement automation control systems during the last two challenging years. Uh, I will share with you some, uh, you know, uh, projects, uh, a couple of projects uh, we have worked through. Just give you uh, a, a little bit more details um, the type of work. Uh, I think, uh, so first of all, uh, in terms of uh, the way I perceive it, uh, undergraduate research, whether it's sponsored by DOED or other organizations, or even you know, our own initiatives, it is aiming at students' success, like early panel speakers want. Uh, but I want to be a little bit more specific in that the success, uh, as I said, is success at college career. Uh, so that uh, just taking courses, uh, get A, that's great. But I think uh, the undergraduate research really uh, enrich, enhance their educational college uh, experience, as well as for career preparation. Uh, the challenge of the last two years is uh, how do we, for that sake, the goal is still the same, how do we make uh, the undergraduate research feasible, productive. Uh, uh, what I say is the, the accessibility. Uh, what uh, for our research we need to use uh, the, the main thing is applied research. 
So we need to access our hardware, we need to have access our software. Of course, uh, we all use uh, Zooms and all that. Some of the hardware software are in the regular uh, periods. Those can be very expensive, required to end, uh, very costly. So for the uh, recent you know, remote research uh, activities, we use uh, particularly choose the topics and uh, the hardware, software, so that they are generally uh, open source, uh, is low cost accessible. Uh, so for automation, we use, uh, these are very popular and a very well-known platform. For instance, Arduino controllers, Raspberry Pis. Uh, so this is used for programming purpose <coughs> for simple electronic testing, power supply, data position, multifunctional. Uh, on the software side, uh, we use a range of, uh, again, free software platforms. Some of them are better known than the others. Uh, I mentioned about four that here. Uh, this is more geared towards uh, industrial distributed automation, which I will uh, share with you an example later on. Uh, so uh, a couple of uh, research projects. Uh, one is uh, we have students uh, involved looking into how to use a particular uh, data communication system for in vehicle applications. Again, um, given our interest in applied research, we want to see the canvas, which is used is an industry standard data communication network for sensors devices uh, in, in vehicle application. How do we, uh, we want to explore its protocol, its architecture and implementation. Uh, so uh, for that purpose, uh, we uh, find our uh, uh, instrument uh, cluster, uh, VW instrument uh, cluster, and which has a number of bias uh, displays uh, that are campus compatible. Again, campus is a data communication network based on two wires. You can co connect uh, multiple tens of sensors uh, on a two wire network to allow data exchange communication. Uh, then uh, we have uh, also in use Arduino controller and uh, canvas modules, sensor elements built together so that it allows communication between the uh, 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 between the uh, the sensor node uh, from the Arduino side to the real uh, cluster, uh, the VW cluster. Uh, so that is a demo system that uh, we find it uh, quite uh, useful uh, presentation uh, for how our canvas uh, used uh, in, in real time, so to speak. Uh, one other worth noting point is um, where develop this type of demo system, we need additional instruments. And uh, there is uh, uh, some, uh, what's it called a pickup, uh, is a portable uh, device. Uh, you use it with the PC, then you end up with a PC based oscilloscope. Um, again, with the funding from the program we were able to acquire these relatively low cost devices. Uh, instead of spend thousands, we spend hundred, just a little bit over 100 or between 200 uh, to allow students take this uh, on, you know, on loan to work remotely. Uh, so you can see on the lower, lower right hand, there is a capture of uh, data communication. It's actually a message frame uh, in the, uh, the canvas. So that make uh, a quite holistic research project experience for the research students. Uh, so this is uh, one example as what I say uh, uh, applied research. Um, a, a little bit uh, bigger picture of this. Uh, I think the topic selection uh, to allow students make meaningful uh, remote research is uh, 
uh, the, this campus uh, not only be, uh, is accessible, but also afterwards, uh, given the current proliferation of electric vehicles, the, the knowledge, the skills working with this type of system can be quite valuable. As a matter of fact, the research student um, get an internship afterwards. And so next summer, the student is going to work with uh, Amazon. Um, now, another example is uh, industrial uh, automation related. So if the previous one is more suited to students have less research experience, this one requires uh, a little bit more research experience. Uh, one way to look at it between the two, the first one perhaps a sophomore level student can undertake. This one will be a junior level or uh, typically uh, to undertake. Uh, what you see in that picture is uh, a demo kit, just halfway. Uh, it has two motors and uh, two pair of sensors, which mimic a uh, punching machine and a conveyor belt, typically found in a manufacturing uh, you know, facility. Uh, the idea is to control this system. Then you will say, well, just two motors, it's not a big deal. Indeed, it's not. Uh, what is uh, uh, our research uh, goal is to use a different control paradigm to implement control strategy on this system. What all this topic, distributed automation, uh, how it started actually goes back a number of years. Um, ExxonMobil, uh, which everyone knows, uh, a big global corporation, they have a lot of uh, manufacturing facility. In those typical manufacturing facilities, um, there are production hardware, uh, the, the units, uh, in those units, there are a lot of uh, instruments, a lot of uh, controls and controllers, uh, control elements, valves, and all that. And on top of those hardware setup, they also have control system software. And that the whole system, hardware software, is the so-called distributed control system. Um, what is interesting, what is special about those industrial distributed control systems is their hardware and software are coupled. Uh, by the same manufacturer, typically. Uh, imagine if in these days we use a laptop from, uh, we use a laptop from this one right now is Lenovo, uh, but we are using Microsoft operating system. So the software and the hardware is decoupled. And that offers us as end user tremendous advantage and flexibility. We can choose, we use the software, Microsoft operating system, but we can shop around, look for best of hardware suits our needs, best in terms of functionality, cost, features. But in industrial control system, the, the, the whole complete system has hardware and software, they're coupled. So you're locked into that system. The lifetime cost is very high. So the whole idea of distributed uh, industrial automation using this open, uh, process automation uh, strategy is what is aiming at is decouple this hardware and software. So we choose just for demo purpose this punch machine and conveyor belt, and we choose another software is the board light uh, to allow students to implement uh, distributed control for this uh, relatively simple uh, to motor to, uh, to set up sensor system to to really demonstrate. Uh, can we do the decoupling successfully? Uh, so uh, this is a still ongoing project, uh, but uh, the initial result uh, is really uh, quite promising. Uh, again, uh, even at uh, the industrial world, they are still seeing this is a relatively new trend. And uh, so we uh, feel that uh, we want to explore this area. Uh, one is uh, for students to gain uh, industrial automation uh, kind of, uh, uh, application that the uh, uh, philosophy. Also the skills uh, involved uh, for programming or testing. Uh, let me just slide. Yeah. Uh, so, Looking at uh, 
the outcomes of these uh, couple of years of undergraduate research. Uh, I would say at students level, uh, because they, their involvement in these research activities, they have the opportunity to gain in-depth knowledge and skills. Uh, in my particular area is, uh, you know, bench, electronic bench testing, uh, you know, uh, verification, and also program. Uh, they also gain personal skills, uh, you know, doing research work, they have to read, they have to explore, they have to uh, think critically, given the problem, how to solve it. Uh, we have regular meetings, we discuss, uh, we, we do weekly presentations, five minutes stand up for kind of informal presentations. And of course, the tobacco also requires uh, midterm and, you know, that uh, an end of the program uh, uh, presentations. So these are quite uh, valuable experience from for students' perspective. Because they have uh, undertaken these research activities, their confidence will uh, Use the example of the research student who uh, worked on the campus. Uh, after, afterwards, uh, the next semester, he joined the students' club and uh, played quite a leading role uh, in terms of the, uh, the club activities, um, you know, uh, aerospace related projects. Uh, uh, the uh, I, I think uh, from program level point of view, uh, because uh, our you know uh, work, we feel that uh, the individual research uh, project uh, give us uh, the kind of uh, build up to look into how we can explore our offering down the road in terms of research as well as curriculum development. Uh, on myself, I, I, I'm mm -hmm. thinking of incorporate some of the topics of this research into my regular teaching as well. So uh, the real benefit, I, I think, is uh, uh, at multiple level and uh, very broad. Again, ultimately, uh, I feel that uh, we keep our goal uh, on student success. Uh, despite the challenge of this uh, pandemic situation, um, we, we can you know, still uh, uh, accomplish significant results. Uh, I'm open to any questions. Okay, thank you. Let me kind of wrap up and then we'll get those questions real quick. So these are just some examples. This is gonna be online. I'm not gonna go through it. You've seen their examples much more powerful, but these were uh, uh, posters uh, or their plans for, for how they were know. We had a YouTube presentation. You can, uh, this will be available and that way you can uh, see, these are two sophomores and the girls are two freshmen. It's amazing what they came away with. And then finally, they did have to uh, submit an abstract based on the DOED template that was sent to us. And um, some did present, not everybody. Okay, so I'm going to go through here. We do survey and assess. And so we use the SURE survey, which is by Lapato. And it's uh, very telling. If you haven't ever used it, if you do any kind of mentored research, I would uh, promote that to you. It's an attitudes and uh, confidence capacity uh, measure. So it's very good. And then finally, the leadership measure. Uh, we were able to uh, actually get a publication and these two professors were part of it. Um, I will end there and we, you have our emails. Uh, does anybody, and thank you so much for listening. Does anybody have any questions for our presenters? Anyone? Come on over here a little bit. We, we have time for one <laughs> question. Who will that, who is going to be the one questioner? Come on, didn't everybody teach you to ask the question? <laughs> She's going for the glasses. Okay, go on. So, so how does this change the future? I mean, we imagine that COVID will eventually get you back in your labs, but are you going to keep some of these? Questions? Briefly, briefly. Okay, yeah, good question. Yeah, so how, what's the post of a damage situation? Well, um, the the, the relevance to daily life in chemistry teaching is always important. Okay, when we teach general chemistry or, or advanced chemistry, we 
always trying to relate the cat to the real world. So this way just to inject some excitement or motivation. So we'll continue on this, okay? And then, so how we are going to continue on this? Um, so when we go back to the central facility, of course, then we'll go back to normal, but this one will continue to serve as some, some like, a, like a long-term project, okay? They have something to develop at the home. They, they are following our Google Google examples, but they are have some like practical exam. I can imagine several ways to continue on this uh, practical exam or semester long project. This can be research oriented and we have lots of opportunities for this. This really is a pioneer for my for, for, for well, and I think Dr. Fang, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, if I, I go ahead. Yeah, we want to go to Dr. Jiang. I also like to add, uh, and partly continue with the uh, the panel's opinion. There is shift of mindset. So we're not going back 100%. Uh, what is going to happen down the road is we're going to combine our, our experience over the last two years with our previous, uh, you know, uh, the the practice to optimize. Uh, what we're going to do down the road. So this remote learning, remote research, certain elements we will continue for sure. And then I would only add that uh, we, we definitely uh, answered the question, how will we do it? Now, they've, they've evolved also. And the summer of 2020, uh, they did this and they've evolved over the course of academic semester, research and two other summers. So even though we can go back into the lab, there's still fruit to be pulled at home with students leading their own experiment. Like Dr. Uh, Jang showed uh, what a team, they're always in teams, they're not by themselves necessarily. And one team came up with this uh, fuel cell that you know, he didn't, and the titration, that he wanted something to detect uh, pH, and yet they came up with a titration device. And I mean, you're going, oh my goodness, you know, more than what we wanted. So when he says fun, his, his definition, I'm not speaking for you, but his definition of fun is they're learning chemistry. And the kids, I mean, I say kids, but the undergraduate may think that they're having fun, but that's part of it too. Research is fun. It's hard, but it's fun. So uh, thank you for your question. Now we're over time. We're, we're not over time. We're right on time. And we're going to, uh, is that recorded? Yes. Uh, we're going to uh, say thank you so much. It's lunchtime, I believe, but we want to show you the QR code. Uh, come on up here so you can get on camera so that they can take your shot and you can get hold of this uh, PowerPoint. Is that what I understood you to say? Oh, sorry. The QR code gets them yes. to the PowerPoint. Is this is for no, we're, we're presentations. So you can now. Oh, yeah. yes, there it is. Yeah. We're already sent like comments. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what about these people right here? Oh, they're already. They already got it. Okay, well, thank you so much. Have a wonderful hit. If your university hasn't joined, they need to join. <laughs> I'm serious because it's it's really quite beneficial. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you professor. <laughs>